good morning, everybody. We are so glad to have you here with us today. And of course, all of us here at the church would love to wish each one of you a very Merry Christmas. Oh, I know the kids are excited. I've already heard some stories about how good it is to wake up on Christmas morning. And I think what we do today, the kids will enjoy. And how many enjoyed that special the kids sang last week? Uh, back by popular demand, at the end of the service, they're going to sing for us again, the ones we have here. So let's ask the Lord's blessing on our day, and then we're going to begin. I need to let you know that if you think today's service is innovative and interesting and fun and exciting for kids, well, I had nothing to do with it. I've stolen ideas from Danielle and Rusty and a lady on the radio. So I'd like to give the credit, but let's do the, do the most important thing and give the Lord the credit, right? Let's pray. Father, we are blessed. Oh, not only do we get to live in a great land with great opportunities and an overabundance of blessings, but Father, we get to come here without any hesitation to, to do what is most important, and that is to give attention to the great plan that you've had for us. Lord, this plan included a Savior, for, for without him we would have no hope. We understand that. So, Father, we come here to celebrate the mystery of the Incarnation. Lord, we don't understand it, but we do thank you for all that you've done, and we, and we celebrate the fact that our Savior is the Lord Jesus, your Son. And, Father, we're asking that all that is said and done today will honor him on this, the day we've selected to celebrate his birthday. And Father, of course, we thank you as we pray, coming because of the Lord Jesus. And indeed, that's why we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, we're ready to begin. Good morning and Merry Christmas. You're trying to figure out which one to say, aren't you? <laughs> we're glad that you're here. If you would stand with us this morning, joy to the world. We'll do three verses. Father, Lord, we are thankful um, for this day um, that we can celebrate the birth of our Savior, Lord, that um, he was sent to earth to live a perfect life and ultimately to die on the cross to shed the blood that would pay the price that we could never pay in full. And we thank you for that. And we're here to praise you and to honor you and to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Greet a neighbor around you with a Merry Christmas.
Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody here this morning. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Um, we'll go through our announcements real quick. We don't have a whole lot. You guys are looking at that, aren't you? How many of you can read that? Anybody read that? It's a very innovative present. You can do two things at once. This is a multitask mug. It reminds you that you don't have to search Google because your wife knows everything, guys. <laughs> and you drink your coffee at the same time. See that? I got that yesterday. Probably one of the best Christmas gifts I ever got. <laughs> what I'm doing is saying what you chicken guys are out there afraid to say. <laughs> well, well, it's good to see everybody here this morning. Um, don't forget about the, the cards back there at the church post office. You can pick those up. And then uh, there's no FBT club meeting this week, but we'll meet right after the, the kids start back to school. We're going to be doing the same thing New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. We'll have the same kind of church service. So plan on that at 10 a.m. again. Sign up sheets for the nursery. Uh, check that out on the back bulletin board. I don't know how many they need, but we need to fill that thing up for 2017 so everybody can have a turn and be down at the little kitties and have fun. And then you can see there uh, for Benaya an address, you can send him a card. Then on the back side, there's a lot of families dealing with uh, uh, passing of a loved one during this time of year, so keep them in your prayers. Keep Roger around in your prayers as well as he's uh, uh, dealing with his um, treatments and, and the cancer that he has. And then also Ronita Alcorn's grandson and many others on that prayer list that, that need our prayers. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So keep Greg in your prayers. Any other announcements from the floor? If not, I need Bruce and Aaron. You know, you guys don't get my mug. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that. Normally hold hands with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I need the women too. What? Hey, look at your wife. <laughs> oh. I know okay. what that look means. We need, I'm not uh, married to her. I guess we need Beth. And she's in the nursery. Well, we'll let her buy, buy this time. All right. Well, we do appreciate all the hard work you guys do for us here at the Fulton Baptist Temple. And we got a little token of appreciation. Bring kids out. Come on, guys. Now, which one's biggest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, each get a basket. Um, Aaron, I wasn't able to get those four Mountain Dews in yours, so see me afterwards for the kids. <laughs> I got their names right on each Mountain Dew can for this afternoon. That work? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and I want you to know, I share everything with Aaron. He, I get the big piece. <laughs> he gets the little half. You know? <laughs> he takes the first bite. I get. <laughs> well, we Thank appreciate. You so much. Yeah, we appreciate all your hard work. Thank Thanks, you. guys. God bless you guys. All right, ushers, if you come forward, please. We're ready for our ushers now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time that we could be here this morning, Lord, to come and to worship you, to praise you. Lord, this day to remind us of your love for us, your willingness to send your son to this earth, to become a man that he would go to that cross one day and, and pay the price for our sins, Lord, to be that payment for our sins, to give us hope of eternal life. And for those who trust and believe in him and, and accept them into their hearts, Lord, we just thank you for the salvation that comes because of it. And Lord, as a church, we ask that you'd help us to, to have a loving heart towards those around us in our community, to be willing to share that message of the gospel with them as well. And Lord, now we, we just pray for our nation. We thank you for this great country you've let us live in, Lord. 
You've blessed us in many ways, given us many opportunities here, God, that a lot of people around the world don't have. So I pray, Lord, that what you've given to us, may we give back with glad hearts. May those monies be used to, to further your ministry through the world, through the missionaries we support, and also through our community. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. going to flip your bulletin here a little bit. We're going to have Katie and Karen Hutzel are going to share special music while they're getting ready real quick. Um, Rusty, they're going to do on Wednesday night, um, the FBT club guys are going to get together at the FBT center and we're inviting, they're inviting any other guy in the church who's willing to come, if you're man enough, for an airsoft tournament in the back of the building. So adult guys, if you want to come See how well you can run with the kids and their airsoft rifles? You are more than welcome to show up. So um, that'll be Wednesday night at 6.15. We met teenagers also, not... Yeah, teenagers. The FBT teenagers. They also work. I'm sorry, FBT youth teenagers. Sorry, Simon. <laughs> and adults. So, um, yeah. You're not allowed to wear layers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have Karen and uh, Katie are going to share a special with us this morning.
you would stand with us once more away in a manger. And um, I heard this week, I, I really enjoy, um, I don't know if you've ever watched um, people do spoken word. And um, a, a girl had, had done some poetry to go along with a song. And um, she pointed out, she made, in, a, in just a different way that I had never thought before, but this baby that was born, this baby that was, was only being born, had already been to eternity and back. This baby that was born, those little hands had already been a, it had already created all things. Those little hands, that little baby was already a king. And so to see that in just this little baby, and to know that that baby would be, is there to live a perfect life and to be our savior as well. Um, what, a, what a great thing to, to begin to understand. So if you would uh, sing with us, we'll do all three verses of Away in a Manger. If all the kids would make their way down front to fill this row, and you might push Tyler and Trisha out of the way, but fill up that row, they'll learn real quick what it's like to have 15 kids. <laughs> On this last verse, be near me, Lord Jesus. seated. All right. Well, guys, if you'll sit down, because I'll need your help today. Now, there's room over here. Some of you can sit over here if you like. All right. Oh, we kicked out the Benes. That's too sad, isn't it? Hey, listen. Today, I need kids that are cute. Oh, pfft. you're You're all qualified. Adorable. How many are qualified? Oh yeah, raise your hand, you're all adorable. And experienced opening Christmas gifts. Oh, we got some kids who are qualified. Well, around the church, I have some gifts. Now, I think I only have eight, so I won't choose any sisters. You're the first one in a family. Trinity, you're the first. Addie, you're the first. Joelle, you're the first. Bella, you're the first. How many do I have? Stand up if I've pointed to you. One, two, three, four. You're the first. Braden, there's five. You're the first. No, no, you're not. Oh, you're the first. And you're the first. I think I have eight. Oh, now, there should be eight gifts in the church. Oh, is that seven? Did you count, Joel? Oh, we have nine. Well, two of you fight over that last gift, would you? So, without running, don't be knocking over any of the old people in here. Go find those gifts. If I asked, if I called you by name, only find one. Oh, that one you can't reach. <laughs> only one. Only find one. Go look. Uh, none are in the balcony. They're all right here. Do you see what I see? 
We have some more. Oh, oh. Help, help them if you see them walking around. So did everybody get one that had their hand up? Oh, we still have them. All right. All right, we have two more going. Ah, getting some help. All right. And is there one more? Or did we have nine kids? Well, good. These two have fought a lot. <laughs> a couple of cousins. We'll let them wrestle right here in front. Now, raise your gift up so we can count. Make sure we got them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good deal. Now, let's start going this direction. This time, would you please open yours and bring up the content? Nope. One person. Go ahead. Now, tear it. There's nothing special. I just rip. Come on. Use your teeth. <laughs> and then place it on this Christmas tree. Ah, she's bringing up an ornament. Go ahead and have a seat, guys. And she's hanging that up on there. And those, oh, I didn't get a chance to see it. What was that, a lamp? Ah, listen, you remember these words in John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. We just heard a beautiful special about that. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to light. Open up that one, please. Fast. That's it. And it's a permission slip to do whatever you want for a whole year. <laughs> Open that up. And then hang it on the tree. Now that's a strange looking thing. Come on up and hang that on our tree. That are, those are the letters in the Greek alphabet that mean alpha and omega. Oh, listen to these words. We can't really explain them, but wow, what wonderful words. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He made us a kingdom of priests for God, his Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. And then it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, who is still to come, the Almighty One, Alpha and Omega. Show them how it's done. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You know the janitor. She'll get it. <laughs> ah, hang that up for us. We know this part of the story. We just sang about it. Away in the manger. All right. That's a manger. That's a manger. Hey, let's see you do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pretend like it's your brother's hair. Ah, no, it is a heart. You've already heard some of the people talk about it in the announcements and their prayers. We've sung about it. Oh, man. It's not how much you know in your head, is it? A lot of people know the story of Jesus, but it's whether or not you believe in the Lord Jesus as your Savior in your heart. Oh, that's a great reminder. And, Joel, open that up. Let's see what's in it. Oh, she's good. Well, maybe not. <laughs> she's getting it. Oh, Grandpa put extra tape on that one, I guess. All right, let's open that up. <laughs> no, but out popped a, what is that? A crown, Joel, would you put that on our Christmas tree? Hang that ornament. Oh, listen. We talk about Jesus is the king, but boy, when I see a crown, he will have a fancy crown like that someday. When we see him in heaven, we'll say, 
He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, nobody greater than him. But I am also reminded that he wore a crown of thorns. Again, if you listen carefully, you've already heard the story that Jesus came, you remember the verse, for God so... For God, go ahead, real loud please. Yeah, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life, if you believe. All right, all right. Now, how about one more gift? Let's see what we got. Go, Bella. Oh, bring that up. A lamb. Now that is funny. A lamb. Ah, oh, we know the story. Not only were the lambs there when the shepherds heard the great news that a Savior was born, but we read in, first, or in John chapter 1, verse 29, that John the Baptist said, The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Whoa. That's why we worship him. He is the Savior. Well, we have one more. Oh, two more. Sorry. Go ahead and open yours, Trinity. And would you hang that on the tree? Oh, that's beautiful. We know about the nativity star. That's where Jesus was born. Yes, that star. Oh, turn it so everybody can see it. That was the star that announced Jesus' birth to the Magi, the men from probably Persia. A special star, not a regular star, it's the nativity star. And we've heard that in our story. We have one more gift to open, if you would, please. One more. No, we, we've got eight gifts. We've already opened them all. All right, let's see. Rip that thing open. Let's see what's in there. Ah, now that's an interesting thing to put on a tree. Come on up and put that on the tree. It's a real old-fashioned looking book. It's called a scroll. Well, listen, this was written in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. If you would unroll the scroll, it would say this. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. If we read in the Bible, we would see many, many places where predictions were made about the birth of Jesus. Well... That's what we wanted to do, was to open up all of the gifts and talk about Jesus. Thank you for helping. Did we get all the gifts? Well, if you can reach it, we'll open it. We've got a problem. We don't even have a ladder tall enough to reach that. We'd have to bring in scaffolding. And Mr. Scott doesn't like to bring in scaffolding, does he? How, there's no way, I'm sorry guys, that gift will be there next Christmas. I'm not sure how we can get it down. I don't get it. Do you, do you get it? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He knows how. Let me go. 
help me out here, because I already got one very serious duh. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When we did this in youth group, the teenagers were already on each other's shoulders trying to get that sucker, but we hit it in a different spot, but I know somebody found it. But, okay, how many of you guys opened a gift this morning? Already. How many of you at least plan to open a gift today? Now, one, wait, you're not going to open a gift? Okay. Now, one thing that we have to know about every gift that we opened here today did they cost you anything? No. Not me. When you opened a gift this morning and you found it under the tree, did it cost you anything? No. No? Was it free? Yes. Well, no. Well, it was free to you. <laughs> I'll be hurting, but it was free. <laughs> Paul told us in the book of Romans in chapter 5, he said, For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are still guilty of many sins. You see, the gift that God gave us in Jesus was free. It doesn't cost us anything. And that's why when you guys receive a gift, a true gift, if a gift is truly given, it doesn't cost you anything. If you give a gift, you should not expect anything in return. Sometimes when people give a gift exchange, they hand a gift and then they stand there thinking that they'll get one in return. But that's not right. When you give a gift to somebody, you should give that gift and expect nothing in return. There's no strings attached. Now, in the Old Testament, was that in the uh, first part of the Bible or the back part? Old Testament. It's in the first part, okay? Now, in the Old Testament, one thing we got to remember did they have the words of Jesus? Did they know about Jesus in the Old Testament? Who came first, Moses or Jesus? Moses, Moses came first. He was in the Old Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, they didn't have Jesus. Jesus had not yet come. So it was like this. They wanted access to God. But guess what? It really wasn't there. Unless they gave something. In the Old Testament, they had to go to the temple and they had to give something in order to receive forgiveness of sins. Okay? In order to get that, they had to give something that they owned. Most of them were farmers or herders, so they gave grain or they gave sheep or they gave something, but it cost them money. Okay? But remember that God told us that His gift of Jesus is free. Now when we look at this up here, and we say, okay, that's a long ways away. And we think about the story of Jesus and how Jesus came to earth. Sometimes we miss the fact that when Jesus came, God revealed Himself through His Son, Jesus. The angels told the shepherds, and I'll just read this part very quickly, in Matthew chapter 1. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the words of the Lord's message through his prophet, which was Isaiah. And Isaiah said, Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. You see, when Jesus was born, and when Jesus came to this earth, there was a connection. There was a connection between us and God. Jesus connected with us in a way that only a human being could. He taught in ways that humans could clearly understand. And He revealed the true nature of God to us. Now, who guessed? How are we going to get this down? How? Um, we know what we're down here, but we know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? 
Oh wait. So there's a button somewhere? Let's see if it really does work. Ooh. No. Not, not far enough yet. Okay, great. Boy, I don't know if I can get this thing down. I may have to unwrap it here. These are good. Is this a practical joke? <laughs> okay. Now, when Jesus came to us, and it was a free gift, okay? And when Jesus gave that, when God gave the gift of His Son to us, and it didn't cost us anything, was that the end of the story? Was that the end of our story? Does it end there? Jesus being born and that's it? No. no, because that's the only the beginning. Now, how many people can guess what's in this gift? Can anybody guess? What do you think? An ornament? Mm, nope. How about you? Mm, nope. Think about Jesus. Okay, God's gift to us. Right there. But Jesus' gift to us was part of being on the cross. You see this right here? It was an ornament. It was an ornament. Here, you want to hang that on the tree? You want to hang that on the tree? That's pretty heavy. It might take the whole tree down. Is it going to take the tree? Okay. So, when we think about Jesus being born, and we think about that free gift that God gave to us, Guess what? Jesus also gave us a free gift when He submitted Himself to die on the cross for our sins. So we cannot open a Christmas present that's freely given. We cannot give a present that's freely given without truly representing the story of Christmas. Now, when each of you give a present today, if you give a present or you receive a present, think about Jesus. Because He gave the ultimate present. And He gave His life for us on the cross. I think we have a song to close, don't we? Yeah. Now, Mom and Dad, let me explain this nail to you. Remember I said that part of what I heard was on a radio station? Because this seems like a rather morbid thing to hang on a tree. And this is the Christmas nail. Maybe you've heard people speak of it. And what you do next year when you decorate your tree is you stick this inside the tree right by the trunk and you hang it there. And that way you will be reminded, your kids will be reminded, it will give an opportunity to give a good gospel story and to say this ugly nail reminds us that God gave us the Lord Jesus because we desperately needed a savior. There was no hope in being better. There was no hope in doing more. There was no hope in being extra religious. It was Jesus dying for me. That's what gives me forgiveness. When by faith I receive the Lord Jesus. Now, we have one of these, I hope for every family. We may or may not. We, we have 50 out there. And we'd like for you to take it home. So boys and girls, don't you get it. We can imagine all the trouble that could cause. You let your mommy or your daddy get it. And then next year, or even this year, if you can reach inside your tree and hang this, then you'll know the whole story. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in what he did and who he is and all that he accomplished, especially on the cross, well, that person can be born again, have eternal life. Hey, listen, the song you sang last week was so incredibly good 
because it put the whole story together. That we're going to, going to ask you to come up and our leaders will help get you in place. Come up here. Don't knock down the tree. But we're going to ask you to sing one more time this great reminder of the story. And then after that, we'll sing together. Mr. Curtis will come up and lead us in one final song. And then you'll get to go home and celebrate some more Christmas. Moms and dads, thank you for bringing your kids and making them a part of this day. And uh, we were so blessed by this song. We just wanted to hear it one more time. Nice job, kids. If you'd stand with us for our last song this morning, Oh Holy Night.
real quick, that'll be messed up on the last verse too, but it's O oh, oh, Night Divine. Last verse. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are again grateful for what you have done for, the, for us, for this day that we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Lord, the one who, will, who, had, who had come to save us, to shed his blood, to renew the relationship, to make the relationship right between us and our Father in heaven. Lord, we thank you for that. I pray that as we leave here today, Lord, that you would give us safety. Lord, that we would enjoy time with our families, that you would um, every day remind us of the greatness of this gift that has been given to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We are glad that you joined us this morning. Merry Christmas to you, and um, have safety and travels today. Have a blessed day.